the worst shoes to lift weights in, especially if you squat or deadlift or overhead press. Shocks. Are running shoes. Oh. No, not shocks. <laughs> no, so running. no, shocks. Oh, shocks are. Remember the shocks? Absolutely no, terrible. I, those have to be the worst shoes. They, I, all running shoes. All running shoes are terrible because they're made to be squishy and cushiony. Mm-hmm. And uh, you lift heavy weights in them and you are creating instability. So unless you're trying to do instability training, take your running shoes. Okay. Uh, leave them so at home. don't wear Asics. Okay, quick. Three, yeah, three worst pairs of shoes you've seen somebody squat in. Uh, shocks has got to be up there. Yeah, shocks is one of them. Any type of running shoes with Nike, a thick, Nike, thick Nike, Nike, uh, roaches. No, the roaches, the ones that are like the squishy, soft, yes. uh, yeah, super yeah, comfortable shoe to yes, wear. Yes, super yes, comfortable. Yes. And I love those shoes. Yeah. But horrible. They're like a big marshmallow. And like, yes. even when you walk in them, you can feel them move around. That's it. And then maybe the idiots that do it in Crocs. Yeah. Crocs. Crocs. So, Crocs are not BK good. Knights. Yeah. So yes. Crocs, old Shocks, and uh, What's that one roushes, shoe? Uh, Hoka? Hoka? Hoka uh, oh, the Hoka running shoes? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, terrible, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that would be bad. Too. Yeah, because, you know, okay, so uh, what you want when you're going to do a heavy barbell lift is you want to be stable. Connected you be to the solid. ground. You want to be connected. You don't want any, you don't want your ankle <laughs> to have the ability to twist this way or that way or move like you're on a squishy surface. Now, back in the day, we would do that on purpose. With Dyna discs, uh, and there were idiots out there that were trying doing heavy lifts on them, and that's indeed what they were, uh, idiots. Um, there is something known as instability training, but you see this far too often in gyms where I'll see people doing heavy lifts, heavy enough to where they have to wear a, a, a squat belt and they'll chalk up, and then they're doing it in running shoes, especially for deadlifts with your heel elevated with the squishy shoe. Um, you've increased the risk of injury. It's all you've done. By lifting that way. And then elevating your heels with a deadlift in, in particular. Yeah. I know there's some arguments for some heel elevation. I don't like them. <clears throat> I like flat, stable feet for a deadlift because it is a posterior chain exercise. I can see some argument for a slight elevation of well, the heel for squats. Yeah. But you want stable shoes. Look at Olympic lifting shoes. They're, they're basically made out of wood. Mm-hmm. You want strong, flat, stable shoes or barefoot if you have strong feet and strong ankles. So the running shoes terrible. So originally, I would have said like Chucks was my go-to, but now since we've been working with Zero Shoes, I'm such a fan of the toe box mm-hmm. because that's the one knock I have on Chucks. I love yeah. Chucks, and I've been I've been squatting and deadlifting in Chucks for for a very long time. But they do; they are narrow shoes. Yeah, they they crunch your feet. And yeah, so that, you need that surface area for grip. I yeah, mean, if your toes can actually like spread out and you can really dig them into the ground, it, man. All the, the the ground forces you create are so much more significant. Yeah. I mean, you know, you could test this, by the way, for people who are like, well, what's the difference? Well, try doing this. Try doing a push-up with your thumb and your fingers together, and then try doing a push-up with a wide uh, grip, if you will, with your fingers wide. See if you notice a difference in your connection uh, to the push-up. Now, we're far more connected to our hands than we are to our feet because right. we don't wear shoes on our feet all day long like we do with our feet. But something similar happens to your feet. And it's interesting because modern shoes uh, for a long time now have tried to kind of create this point with your foot at the very end. Yeah. But that is not natural. And if you look at pictures of feet from people who live barefoot their whole lives, like modern hunter-gatherers versus the way our feet look, we have deformed feet, unfortunately. We have atrophied, deformed feet. Our toes come in together at a point. Um, we don't have strong, uh, you know, muscles on the bottom of our feet. We're just not connected. Um, and that takes away from your ability to connect to the rest of your body because it's all connected. But when you're doing heavy lifts at the very least, you want a flat sold stable shoe. And I agree with you. Zero shoes, uh, is my, is one of my new favorites because it allows me to do this with my toes, spread them slightly and then drive into the floor. And I feel much more connected. I also like that. They actually look like good shoes. Like yeah. st- stylistically, I mean, <clears throat> I mean, I'm not wearing them out to go to dinner in them and stuff like that. But at least I don't feel silly in them. Like the five finger shoe movement was like too much for me. Do you guys still see never anybody get, wear those? Yes, yes, people still wear those. <laughs> yes, I mean, they're, 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 they're ridiculous. Be like super functional guy. Oh you know, my god, they're, those, they're but, the ugliest thing ever. So yeah. that was the challenge I felt like with the these. Uh, these shoes, right? Because they're obviously they're they're for performance, right? Yeah. You're not wearing them, but somebody had to come out and make a brand that, like, hey, these are good looking shoes and they're functional. And I feel like 
zero zero shoes did the best at that. I think they, they of all the, they the the barefoot type of or minimalist type of shoes, I think that they did the best job. Yeah. So, but we should have a competition to see who could get laid wearing those shoes. Wow, <laughs> wow. what? It'd be like <laughs> impossible. <laughs> what? Oh, oh, the five figure yeah, ones. The five yeah, figure yeah. ones. <laughs> That's instant dryness. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you're not yeah. getting anything happen. Yeah. Those yeah. shoes were impossible, dude. Sure. Yeah, no, hundred percent. I, yeah, I, I, I don't like. Uh, I'm just not a fan. Of, I mean, you know, this is funny too. Off topic. I'm just not a fan of feet in general. So oh, five yeah. finger Tell shoes just it. reminds me that there's toes out there. Yeah. As much as I know that they're functional, it's so weird how conditioned we are. Right. We're so conditioned. It's weird. It's weird that we've made shoes for so long. To your earlier point of like just smashing them into a point, and it's like uh, there's no breathing room there. And it's so. What was the original thought? I don't think is it, is it because like we we're trying to kind of keep them to a point so you could run. Uh, and strike a little no. more effectively That's a really forward. interesting thought. No. Like why? So because I mean, obviously it, doesn't it was like help. leather that was wrapped around your feet back in the days, right? The, well, it started with sandals, right? That's got to be the original shoe. Right, and sandals. you're completely open. You're yes. completely opened up. Well, you think that was even before wrapping leather around them? They probably wrapped leather around them before. Well, I know some hide, culture. You know? Yeah, I don't know. That's a good question. But, I, mean, I wonder regardless, if the point, re Regardless. Because there's yeah. some old shoes. Wooden like, clogs. Where they actually yeah. point the toe. Like it looks like a point. And I wonder if it was to get your foot in a holster. Easier. Oh yeah, maybe it's a horse. That's thing. a guess. Yeah. I'm guessing. Oh, stirrup. That, a stirrup. stirrup sorry, yeah. not a holster. What's a holster? For a gun. Yeah, for a gun. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm trying to put my Thanks, foot Doug. in. Man. Yeah. Yeah. All of a sudden, that's actually all of a that's sudden, actually I'm a not. Agent. That's actually <laughs> not a out. bad guess. You've done well. That's yeah. a pretty. That's I a, actually think that's true. Like oh, cowboy boots, they have the pointed yeah, toe. Yeah, I mean, so it fits inside. So that, yeah. I mean, that definitely makes sense. So it like, fits and, and the, the tall kick. heel, so you the don't slide all the way through. evolution of cowboy boots. We were say that again with the tall the, the tall heel, so you don't slide all the way through. So you hook, yeah, yeah. yeah. So oh. you have something that it presses back against. Now, are you, are you just confidently saying that because it's such a no, good guess? No, I just bought you, some cowboy boots. Or so, you, or, <laughs> oh, so, look at this so guy. You're a cowboy Hold boot a owner. Wait a now, second. Well, He's like, I, I have haven't some, received them. I have some authority here because I bought I, some I cowboy can, boots. Can I just? I've never can we bought talk any. About the, what, can we see these shoes that you bought? An undercover guy. I haven't gotten them yet. He's so undercover. I can't. No, wait. I'm gonna wear them. Let me see. Were they like snakeskin? Oh no, they're gator ostrich. Are they really gator? Of course. Yes. Can I see them? Can we see? Yeah, I'll show them up. Let me see them. I cannot wait to see you in these boots oh, yeah. I can't, I'm, I'm, I'm a little stylish are you I'm a little boots, jealous because I wanted to do that but I can't do it now you can do it who's gonna no, stop you you got the gator boots first now and then it'll look like I'm following your lead okay yeah. well I got a lead let me show them to you they're pretty sharp okay let me see let me see where are you gonna wear these we're living I mean, hey where, relax, that's what I'm guy. wondering He's, he'll find a place to wear them I will find a place find, like I, I have a bunch of suits where do I wear those Doug, I, yeah Doug goes out and does those bro oh my those are gorgeous those are nice huh who uh who who recommended them for you? Who, where, I did a research on my own. Oh, look at you. Yeah, I know, I know, you know where I did it? In the airport. I go, I want some cowboy boots. And I had a layover in Chicago. Yeah. And you started looking. And just I, started looking for, and I saw these boots and they stood out to me. So I ordered them. They suggested going a half size down. I talked to their customer support. I got them and they're too tight. So they're sending me new ones. Uh. See, this is one of my favorite parts of Doug right here. Is mm -hmm. like the undercover little bougie yeah. side of him where he's, he's i mean these aren't like cheap fucking boots here right now you know what i'm saying <laughs> these are like louis vuitton type of shoes are they That's yes like, bro those are those are well over a thousand dollars it's like when my friend well was trying to describe his his boots to me he's like dude check out these shit kickers yeah. <laughs> i was like shit kickers yeah i can't That's what I, used to call I, you know because of, because of where i grew up i you know I, you've never seen anybody in boots unless they were riding a horse which i never which i don't see very often so it's just yeah. weird in some oh, places, I, people, I grew up a lot around. You grew up around boots, yeah, all the time. a lot, a lot, yeah. So I, I like them. I feel like it's I playing like dress up, but I never, I never had them though. It's funny because like, uh, so I've been like riding uh, horses, like when we go to different places, like on vacation, and you know, it's become kind of a regular thing. It's just something to do with the kids and whatnot. Uh, in the last time, like they're like, oh, you want to like normally have like steps for you to kind of step up on and like get up on. And there's like. Have you done this before? I'm like, yeah, I've done this before. And so I just like, they're like, go ahead, get up. And I just like threw myself up there. And I'm like, I don't know, man. I feel like a, you know, I could be like a cowboy dude. <laughs> I, I literally, can, can, tell me you cannot see Justin wearing his Viore shorts with them cowboy boots right no, there. No, I don't want to picture that. 100% I could see just, just Stop zero, imagining that. zero fucks yeah. Yeah. rolling up in his athleisure wear shorts. Yeah. It'd be like and the, his freaking, the Chuck Norris and his like, cowboy yeah. boots, dude. No. You know, that is so on brand for him. Shorts, so you know, on those brand. Those shorts right there. Yeah, me. These ones. You don't need to kick your leg out. Th like are those are Viore, aren't they? 
No. Oh, you're not. I was going to say, I don't like those shorts. No, these are, those are Viore. Not, good, these are Viore pants. I normally wear Viore too. shorts. I, hey, you know, these, these are, are the new. So, so, no, no, no. So, you know that these, I customly mess with my Viore's here. So, that these don't come like this. Yeah. So, these are the rip stop. And then I actually go and I get a, a elastic put See, in. See, I like them without the elastic, the way oh. that they make them. I have gorgeous ankles though. That's why. That's why you I have show, to show them show off. off yeah. Ankles. Who told? Wait, hold on a second. Who told you? you have I've actually ankles? been very. I've been complimented multiple times. Like, like seriously, or was it like a joke? Yeah, I mean, from women. So I mean, it's yeah. a, probably probably positive. A Adam has like yeah. all these hourglass like areas of his body. Yeah. You know, yeah. I don't know if you noticed sexy. that. Like he's yeah, he's got this like you waist that tapers. He's got these yeah. ankles that sexy are just like tapered. You guys want to hear? Yeah. I've actually been told that. <laughs> She's actually been told. She's gonna be so mad that I shared this. One okay, so I think every person has this right. The one thing that just makes you go uh or you hate or whatever yeah jessica cannot stand and she told me if you ever do this i swear to god i'll punch you she hates it when men wear p any kind of pants that show the ankle and then they don't wear any socks oh my god if there's no socks really? and ankle showing i've had women that are like she, prefer that that's no exactly, dude that's so she lying. immediately is like uh I, yeah. nothing like yeah well i would never not wear socks like just because it looks like i have no show socks so i would never yeah. not wear well, socks well, it looks that's like gross. You have socks on. yeah right that's the look yeah. that's the idea. Your ankle socks yeah it's a, it's a yeah. what makes an ankle good or not i, I don't bro ask the girls that's the girls. I mean, I mean they want to see the calves. Justin right? has sturdy ankles. Yeah, they, they, they look they're very stable. Sturdy. Yeah, they don't look like they'll uh, yeah. they'll buckle. No, nah. at all. <laughs> no. <laughs> like try try me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but you I, put me next to Justin. Mine look dainty. You know what I'm saying? Look, <laughs> well, then I then I can see now what you mean. They do look pretty. They do know what you mean. <laughs> so I got. I don't know what these are called. These are the the newer Viore like sweatpant ones and i don't know what they're called they're the ones i don't have that i've seen you wear before they're like uh, they're very comfy looking yeah those look really comfy yeah, yeah. super comfortable now have you have you dressed those up or do you just wear them casual um casual I mean, yeah it's gotta be yeah, a when casual I, when thing. i i wear the slacks that they have which are called uh what are the, ones the meta called? yep slacks i wear those when i'm going yeah. out yeah. Yeah. Those. nice because those you could dress up with a button down they yeah. look really really good today's giveaway on youtube is maps anabolic advanced to enter to win, leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel. Also, turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. We also have a sale this month. MAPS split is half off, and the Sexy Athlete Bundle of Programs is also half off. If you're interested, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. You don't but, go out, though, so. Huh? Yeah, you don't. You do. really, no, you don't. Yeah, sometimes. Really? I don't think you when, When's the last time? Once yeah. a week. Yeah. Yeah. Once a week, go out to dinner with the with my wife. Do you guys really just by yourself? Where the do you guys normally go? Yeah, he's lying uh, right now. Just but, so you know, huh? No, I'm just telling Justin he's lying right <laughs> no, now. I'm no, not. I'm, I'm curious. Like, yeah. <laughs> we have, somebody come over. I want to see proof. Like, yes, uh, Friday this, night. It's not on Instagram. It's not this true. happened. Friday happen. night uh, is a date night for us. Oh, and the do you consistently do it? Uh, we almost never miss unless there's something going on. And then what's a typical, what's a typical Friday Typically night? Typically we'll him? go to dinner. So we'll go downtown by where we live or we'll, we have some favorite restaurants that we like to attend. You drive, walk, cause you guys are pretty close. Can't you walk? Walking to downtown is still about a mile and a half. And so, okay, we yeah, so we'll still drive, okay. uh, but a <laughs> lazy way. But um, no, we go every every Friday night. We go out to dinner, and so we'll dress up. Same place. You guys rotate no, around. No, we like to pick different things. In fact, there's one restaurant that we have on the list that we still haven't gone to. It's the one you recommended, Doug. The, uh, where they you cook? It was is it Japanese? Oh, uh, like a tepon place? No, they, you could it's like a, they'll it's make a barbecue a, place. They'll like make like organ meats and. Oh yeah, yeah. That's a like a yakitori place. Yakitori. Yeah. Now, I haven't are, tried that yet. Yeah, now, are you guys one. guilty of like never leaving your your little five mile radius, or will you go to other places to go eat? And stuff we like that we or, always yeah. try to we tend to try to go to different places, but you know where I'm at, right? So downtown, yeah, it's so many different options and yeah. restaurants. Um, so we still haven't we we have we we'll go to the same place sometimes, but typically we'll, we'll find something different. I like to, I like to enjoy. Je Jessica and I are definitely experience. We definitely value experiences over things. We're we're not very likely to spend money on things but experiences will go out of our way to, to like enjoy gator it. skin boots you would never buy no <laughs> yeah. i would uh, gator never. skin uh, boots i feel well, like it's a all, song there. would you if buy you saw me would you buy it would you would you rock it uh boots yeah like those i would rock i mean it. I they won't fit as not like exactly like those but yeah i was actually when i was in well, park not city exactly i like those but i, I mean i like yeah when gear. i was in park city i was looking at a, a pair because yeah, i was just but i have no i was like when would i ever wear these and i, know. I don't know i was thinking about getting a horse just so i could do the whole ensemble <laughs> you know i was actually <laughs> like, looking like at books when we were in nashville yeah my boots when we were in nashville oh, yeah. i didn't have a chance to really 
you have a good look. So I think so. boots look good on women a lot. I do. <laughs> I do. I agree. I do. I, I, agree. Think, when women, I think they look well, really yeah, great on yeah, women. Yeah, yeah. I think dudes, it, it, it either looks like you're playing, uh, like you're playing dress up or like, like you're a legit. Yeah, cowboy. I just, I don't know. It's the poser thing. I just can't, uh, you know, I'm just uh, the cowboy. I'm not, I'm not into any cowboy things. I want to be. Like, I think it's cool. Well, you know, I got a you, mustache. Maybe you know? that's how you start. And maybe that's Doug's thought process. Like, I get the boots first. Yeah. Then I don't have an excuse not to ride a horse. And then yeah. I get a horse. And then maybe. <laughs> well, I like, I like the then culture. I get into saddles. I like the music. Say, I'm not I thinking that far in advance. Then I get into saddles, you know <laughs> yeah. what I'm saying? And then yeah. give myself a I rope. Think, you know? I, 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 I feel like when Justin jumps on the horse, though, the horse is like, Ooh. oh, dude. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's, it's going to be lots a long of, day. Lots of groans. <laughs> and, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had one like like going back trying to bite me. Really? Yeah, the oh. last one, he was just yeah. like, so like biting time. my foot. <laughs> <laughs> like, he's angry. <laughs> it's just one. Get off. I don't, not yeah. two. Yeah, they yeah. don't like all the weight. Uh, it's uh. painful riding a horse, right? Like, it's, I mean, not painful, but well, it's exhausting. It's well, not like you're sitting in a chair. You, oh, I mean, no, no, no. You're yeah, active the whole well, time. Well, yeah, and because, and too, like the last time it was my knee because I was so, like, spread out. Mm. Uh, and, you know, it's just, it, it just puts a lot of strain on, the, on uh, you know, my knee and my ligaments. But it's, <laughs> It's, it is, I, I don't know, dude, I enjoy it. It's like something to do. It's, you know, you're, you're kind of connected to the horse and you're seeing nature and whatnot. It's cool. Yeah. Now riding, uh, have you, you've ridden a lot of horses. Mm -hmm. Have you yeah. ever done the bareback riding? No. That's a whole skill, wow. right? Yeah. There's, yeah, I wouldn't do that. Cause then you got to yeah. pinch it with your legs and you got to. Yeah. And you, uh, you, and you better have a horse. That's, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I guess it's, <laughs> you're, you're, you're going to get launched if you don't. So yeah, 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 yeah. no, I'm, I, I, we had horses, but I actually didn't like riding them that much. Why? My, my, I just wasn't into it. I was more into the ATVs and stuff like oh. that. I had a friend who had- you, It wasn't because you resented the horses because you, you guys didn't pay the electric bill? You know, well, maybe. <laughs> And maybe because the horse, the horse maybe because we all had hor the all the girls in the family wanted horses and we didn't have like an ATV. Maybe I did have a little bit of that. They, they got You're their probably they right. got their present. Yeah, because I wanted that as a, forever. As a, I remember the first time as a young kid when I got when I sat on my first ATV and 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 got to ride it. And I was like, this, like, that's all I ever wanted as a kid. My whole life, I wanted one. And I never got one, but we had horses. And I was just like, I don't want to. Did you go horse. to a lot of rodeos? Oh yeah, I mean. Oakdale Rodeo is a is a big is, it? is a big rodeo. Oh, oh yeah, I yeah, know it's you know it's considered Oakdale's. Uh, you know how like a lot of cities have like a sign. Yes, what, it's considered the cowboy capital of the world. That's the that's the actual sign. I think I've actually Oakdale. seen that sign. Yeah. And the rodeo is a, is a big deal. The whole week is it's a like big deal. It's like the world's greatest cup of coffee, right? But I've, I've done it so that. many times that as I got older, my friends and I, we would leave town when the rodeo comes in because it's just- Too crazy. Yeah, it's too much. Too crazy. Do they do the bull riding? Everything. Everything. That's 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 the craziest sport ever. I mean, I, I don't understand. One of my best friends did that, and I was like, "This guy's crazy." The dudes that do that, they're the size of their balls. Like, I don't understand. Yeah, I know. To Te ride team roping bowl. was my favorite to watch. I think What's that's that? the cool team roping. Where, oh, yeah, where two guys shoot out. out, and they have to get a calf as fast as you can. That's and really so they, cool. they release the calf at the same time that the two horses come out, and then and they have and two, it. And, yeah, one gets the legs, one gets the horns. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, I like it because you have like, it's a team, you know what I'm saying? You have to do it. And then like it's high skill. Yeah. The skill of that is pretty wild to watch. That's cool. Yeah. So I like that. That's but it. the whole bull thing, see, like you, you watch, uh, you ever watch videos of um, like animals versus machines or whatever. And you'll see a bull, like when they do the running of the bulls or whatever, and people will get in a car and a bull will flip a car with oh, his horns. Oh yeah. He'll oh. pick it up and oh, yeah. like, it's a toy. Yeah. That's a crazy animal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jump on that thing back. Flip you in two seconds. Nope. No, you got to be pretty tough to not, be. Not going to do be, that. Be doing that. Not going to do that. <laughs> anyway, speaking of bull, let me uh, let me incite a little bull anger inside you guys. Did you mm. guys see what the what California just passed? The no pronoun way. thing? No. I mean, yeah, but that's not really Always what it is. up to no good. I mean, that's, oh, what do you mean? That's, Have they done anything? That's what it would mean. It's not that? No, anything. it is. It is. But here's, okay, so, Calif so, so our governor. Beneficial. No. Our wonderful governor. Uh, Gavin Newsom signed AB 1955, which bans schools from making any rules requiring parental notification if a child identifies as transgender. So if a school says, hey, if, if a kid comes into class, a fourth grader comes in and says, hey, I'm, I'm another gender. Uh, you can't the tell the parents? You can't make that a rule that like you they, have to the tell school The school cannot make any rules that say, you're, listen, you need to tell the parents if this happens. They've actually said, no, that's illegal. Don't you're not allowed to do that. What crazy? It makes sense to me. 
It's uh, they own your kids. What yeah, okay, that's, that's, that's very clear with this. Have you been okay? Obviously, you have your knee jerk reaction, and now have you put yourself on the other side yes. and tried to l logically unpack what is it? What would be the purpose, or why would you even pass something like that? Because you're the the mentality is you're protecting the child, the child from any potential. Their parent maybe they're scared to tell their parents. So we need to protect the child from their parents. I'd love to but see. You're talking about these are minors. These are yeah. minor children. And, and, and this doesn't mean like, okay, I get if there's signs of abuse, if there's signs of neglect, like that, and those laws all exist. Are you reading the bill done? I'd no, love I'm to not. see no. how many of these actually pass because they always get like no, this certain, f uh, really? Yes. So it's going to be enacted. It's done. It's signed. Because most of what he always says, I mean, he's always like kind of pandering to that very yeah. specific uh, demographic and in, in, in all of these like pie in the sky ideas and everything. But then it just kind of dissipates this, later. This is nothing ever gets. It's like, crazy to me. And I know there's through. bad parents out there. I get all that, but uh, I'm sorry. The, the school does not own your children. These are minors, and if they're coming to the teacher and saying anything that uh, any kind of dysphoria or depression or anxiety or whatever tell me yeah the, tell me the parents need to know everything it's their child this it's, is it's crazy insane. it's crazy to are me. we still on a um uh um what's that called when everybody leaves your state what's the oh word exodus there? yeah are, are, is that happening still in california is it yeah. still i know it was and i know it had it broke records around the covid time and stuff like that are we? Are there, is California still? I don't know. Bleeding people at that rate? I don't know. That's a good question. Yeah, I haven't looked at that in in but, probably over a year. But yeah, maybe while Doug looks that up. So what this did for me is I looked up some because of this. What's going to happen is you're going to see. I'll use the word Exodus again. You're going to see another uh, uh, another Exodus outside of public schools. Already, we're seeing uh, parents take their kids out of public schools and homeschool them yep. or use alternative education in record numbers. It's more than ever. And I think passing this, you're going to see a huge <clears throat> amount of parents. Like one of them was like certain vaccine requirements. Then they took out exemptions. You saw lots of parents leave the schools because of that. Yep. Now they're doing, uh, now with something like this, I think you see more parents take their kids out. And so I looked up stats on homeschooling because uh, as you guys know, uh, we're going to be homeschooling our two youngest. I have a three-year-old and a one-year-old. And there's a lot of misconceptions uh, around homeschooling. I had a lot of misconceptions around homeschooling until I trained a couple clients who were very big in the homeschooling community homeschooled their kid. And I, it totally blew all my misconceptions out of the water. Like a lot of the things I thought were true, just were not true. But I, I, I pulled up some stats on, uh, on homeschooling. So we actually have decades of research and, um, homeschooled children do better generally, um, academically. They are far more likely to retain their parents' values. This is a big one. So if you want your children to have similar values to you. It's kind of obvious, right? Obvious, right? Because right. you're not putting them in a state-sponsored right. school yeah. and try and impose yeah. other values. Um, National Home Education Research Institute studies, uh, and some of these were done by a Dr. Ryan Ray, show that, because a lot of what's one of the, the big criticisms, the socialization. What about socialization? Things you can actually measure, communication skills, community involvement, tolerance of different kinds of people. Homeschool children do better. So a lot of the stuff that's out there around homeschooling versus, you know, public schooling, whatever, um, it's false. It's actually false. The kids actually do better yeah. uh, when they're homeschooled. Yeah. And I think a big part of it, and, I, and I'm not going to be, I, I'm not going to say it's because public schools are terrible, although I think a, a lot of them are. I don't think all of them are. I think a big reason why homeschool kids do well is because parents are just more involved. I think that's a big part of it, right? A hundred percent. You know, because yeah. a lot of times what parents do with traditional education, and we saw this during COVID, is they drop their kids off and then they pick them up. During COVID, a lot of parents saw what their kids were learning. And a lot of parents were like, this is what? What is going on here? This is stupid. And why are we doing it this way? So that caused a big exodus as well. So is this yeah. all stuff coming from that book, Far From a Tree, that no. Jessica had talked about? No, no. Uh oh, I thought that's what it's from. Mm -mm. You know, she was recommending to read that, and it was in line with some of our dad oh, really? topics and stuff like that. No, Are you not no. familiar at all? No, I think she's telling you because she probably told me and I forgot. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Remind Sal. Yeah, yeah. She was texting me that it, like she would be good for that. I thought for sure that it was because you. What's were it called? Oh, she did show me this book. Not, yeah, not I didn't read sure. it though. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, no, I, I do. I do remember seeing the- <laughs> <laughs> Now, now I'm getting it right when she tries to get you to read something like that. It doesn't happen. Then it gets sent over to me. So it is. Mm-hmm. Here, my husband won't read She's this. Maybe, to be effective. Maybe you will. <laughs> I appreciate that. That's about what she just did. <laughs> Dude, yeah. you know what I'm really curious about is the heavy metal tampons. Like, oh, they, my note for that? What, what? Yeah, I saw the, these notes, and, and it's like, <laughs> I just have a picture of this in my mind, and I want to yeah. know if it's <laughs> what it's I'm not, thinking. It's not that kind of heavy metal, unfortunately, <laughs> Justin. Oh. They tested, so uh, there's a huge gap when it comes to testing and regulation for um, certain products. Uh, skincare products, although there's more testing now, is one of them. Uh, perfumes, hair care products, because we don't consider the skin uh, as a way to absorb uh, things, although they do, or, or bring things into the body, and, and um, feminine hygiene products. So a tampon obviously goes inside your body. Mm. The vagina is very permeable. Uh, it can absorb uh, certain things and, and whatnot. And tampons typically don't get tested for things like heavy metals. So there were some third-party organizations that did some testing on tampons and found a lot of them had alarming alarmingly high amounts of heavy metals wow yes which you know they build up in the body they cause problems weird so, that that wouldn't be part of that like that wouldn't be a step i mean the of, of regulation like mm-hmm. that you would put in there no? no and you think about it like a heavy you know if they're made with cotton or other compounds that are grown or whatever like they're sprayed with pesticides they're sprayed with uh certain things and that gets in your body you're not eating it but it yeah. still uh, gets absorbed in the body. So feminine hygiene products, like it's um, a crazy oversight, you know. Yeah, not dude. testing for that right yeah. away. I know it's, and I don't know uh, how alarming this is or not. But I also saw like a video of this guy was like uh, testing out um, um, breast milk that was like oh. not breast milk. It was uh, um, the formula. The formula, yeah. yeah. And it was testing it and and took like a, a really high powered magnet to test for iron and, and like metals and sure enough like went over and like extracted these pretty significant pieces of really? of metal oh, yeah man. it so it like like shards almost that were like mixed in there and you're just like what that's crazy i mean it again i i mean i, I know that there's going to be trace minerals and whatnot but like that's pretty alarming i want to see that video that's yeah yeah, it was it was gnarly. That's not cool. No, it's yeah. not cool. I know I know formulas pretty heavily regulated uh nowadays. Um but I didn't know. Uh, yeah, I'd like to see that video. Yeah, I mean it could be a one-off thing, so it's like it, you know, and they're just Again, there's a lot of these videos out there that are like put and, out for like and how much would that, how how how, how different is that than if you were to scramble some eggs in an iron skillet and then turn around and do this? Oh, I don't breath. think you'll do that with an iron skillet. No, it's like, not that. No, Although they were like right, iron skillet. Really there's a little iron, clump of like you know quite a few shards of metal in it. Right. I mean, yeah. is that not happening though when you when we cook in the iron skillet? Not, not like that. No. But to some degree, you do get some iron from your iron. Skillet. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I know that. That's why I'm wondering. Like, I mean, I'm always like skeptical cool of like videos like that that i mean it's even like uh yeah who was doing who oh is that? is that it right there like gary brecca was doing the uh you know he went uh hard on that's that's and that's that's formula that he's doing mm-hmm. oh that's not good yeah ba- oh baby food baby food oh what's the difference yeah baby food and formula. Yeah. i'd like to see study on that though but that doesn't look good he's definitely pulling out pieces of metal yeah <laughs> yeah it's weird <laughs> Oh, Gerber oatmeal. Oh yeah, you yeah. know when they when they add okay. certain nutrients uh, to foods to fortify them, the, sometimes they don't even they don't consider bioavailability. It's just like here's some. Do you guys think that when like fifty years from now, when we look back, this will be kind of like our one of the big things that we look back and like, oh my god, remember when humans used to do this? Kind of like almost like what uh, I mean. Even though we still do smoke like crazy, so maybe it will be like that. I mean, what are what are the things that we're going to look back 50 years and go like, that was crazy. We did that. We couldn't believe that. Nobody cared about that. Nobody paid attention to that. Will this this conversation be something like I that? Have like, a bad like, like asbestos all over your house and you're just like, yeah, I have, yeah. I have, it's not a big deal. I have yeah. a very bad feeling it's going to be around these things and the radiation they put out. Oh, the oh yeah, the, yeah. That's a good call. Yeah, because- uh, it's on you all the time yeah. in your pocket, so it's next to your. It's also something organs. that was Bluetooth so like penetrates focused through, on right? glorifying and all the positive things about it. That very rarely- have you ever? I mean, have you guys seen like reports? And there's some there's controversy around this, right? But reports where you know some women will carry their cell phone in their bra, 
And then there's like a a lot of there, there are people who are reporting that they're getting breast cancer on the side wow. of the where they hold their phone. And there's some conflicting data. There's nothing conclusive, but it puts out a certain amount of radiation, and it does make sense to me that if it's always in the same place all the time, either on your boob or you know in your pocket next yeah, to your just chronic organs, exposure, or very low or on your head next to it. your 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 brain, that there may be over years and years and years. Uh, increasing a risk of, uh, you know, cell mutations, you know? So that's something that I think we're going to, you know what another one is? Yeah. I was talking with uh, a buddy of mine about this. Um, cannabis. I think we're going to look back mm -hmm. and realize the dangers of cannabis. Now, for, before, before everybody freaks out, not cannabis itself, but rather the stuff that's sprayed on the cannabis in. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, that's different. I mean, that's like, I mean, why single out cannabis? Oh, because I don't think people even pay attention. I well, think I people mean, go to the dispensary, they buy their. their I mean, no their different stuff. than when they go buy broccoli or something else that's getting sprayed. Yeah, like but crazy. you can you can get organic, and it's and, and you get organic. It. It's all the same thing with weeds. They have who, uh, who, who who's marketing it? organic weed? Right? Yeah. Oh, you guys have no idea. That's a no, huge yeah. deal. Okay, one hundred percent. Like oh, when wow, I was I on my way. Oh, even when I was when I was on my way. I've out, never seen it. I've never yeah, seen my way that. out. Oh yeah, pay attention or ask ask when next time you go to a dispensary. They can have organic. Yeah. Oh yeah, hundred percent. So when I when I was on my way out, um, my circle and network of people that were growers were starting to transition all their farms into organic soil. No. No more pesticides. No, like everybody was coming out with all that. In fact, I was getting stuff shipped over these like specific bugs that kill bugs instead of using any sort of sprays to actually put Because you know, the they tested a bunch of uh, um, like uh, cannabis and they found a lot of them high in heavy metals, a lot of them high in so, glyphosate. So here's what you have to be careful of, right? There's, uh, I mean, here alone in the Bay Area, there's hundreds and hundreds of dispensaries, right? And they are the ones that label this is organic or like that. Now, they they're supposed to go through a test, and the, there's companies that that's all they do. Yeah, like the like Harborside does this right. They they actually take in the product and they run all the tests on it. They can tell you if pesticides were used, mm -hmm. if the kind of soil was used on it, anything like that. Uh, and then they're supposed to report that to give it back to the person when the person goes to drop it off the dispensary. They have to show that report or share that. And so, and, and they'll get, they'll get paid out based off of that. And if you are looking and just like we, like in the organic market with food, you pay a premium for something that is, so is, is grown you know where all this organic. came from is what? that we have a family friend who was my age, a little younger, so early forties. And he got the popcorn lung cancer mm. from, and he would vape cannabis all the time. Now vape's different. Yes. And so the conversation started there. Like, uh, what, what kind of solvents are they using? It's in the vape. And the, you know, of course the doctor says, I've seen this a couple of times with younger people. And then it turned into conversations around just the fact that the cannabis itself has got oftentimes has chemicals and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah this dude didn't smoke cigarettes at all, but vaped cannabis yeah. in early forties. I mean, the only reason why I bring up that argument with you is just because I think that's no different than arguing it with any sort of. Vegetable. So you can find, uh, it, you can find cannabis that's tested for all that. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. hundred okay, percent. And that, again, my, we, my, what I was finished, what I was saying was we were all transitioning into that direction of going full organic and everything like oh. that. And then that you, what you would do is you go get run all those tests and then I would Bring that pound and be like, I want a premium for this Got it. because I know they're so clean. Or yeah. Oh, yeah. Because it's so. I wonder clean. if the consumers are really aware, though. You know. Yeah. 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 You guys, people that were like, like, I mean, I wouldn't I've consider you guys like I. you guys. Yeah, and I've been to a well, few. You, yeah, but that's just it. You guys have been a few. You guys aren't like dispensary well, people that go yeah, we're not like, like every heavy week. pot users. I feel yeah, like the every yeah. the average dude or. But that's what I mean. Is like in terms of food in comparison, like uh, yeah, it but, took a while for the organic market correct, to kind of merge. Correct, and that's really kind of I think the argument yeah. is like yeah, it's, it needs, it's, it needs to merge. It's there. It's there. It's there. I mean, it's there. It's just as popular in the dispensary weed world. It's that you guys are just so disconnected from that you're more connected to a banana and, or in broccoli and right, you know right. the, yeah. the pace of how right. that what that was but it, it, it's been in the weed market for a, a long time oh, good. Huh. yeah 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 good, good, but good. i mean i don't disagree. i just i just looked it up myself the other day like i said yeah i don't i, I don't disagree that that's i mean that kind of i think falls in the same uh you know like point that i was making with like in 50 years from now are we gonna look back and all these you know uh xenoestrogens and yeah chemicals that we just uh, said no big deal about and you know is that going to be something yeah. and i would 
put that in that same. Yeah, category. I do. I do. I do. Though think it's going to be around some of the cell phone radiation. I think that's going to be some big stuff. And I think it's going to be big stuff because they're going to fight against it. Because uh, imagine if it came out conclusively, uh, what that would do to the markets. You know? Oh yeah. So I think that you know that'll be one of those. Anyways, I want to hmm. tell you guys something. Earlier, we opened the episode about not wearing running shoes or whatever. I looked up the other day the origin of the treadmill. Do you guys know what the origin of the treadmill is? Ooh. Hmm. Give me some. Thinking. Can we get? A, yeah. Give me some hints. Like, yeah. Year, no. What no. Year, you guys get. Like year? who invent? Like why was it invented? I know what year. Can you tell us the year? Eighteen eighteen. What? Yeah. Okay. So that makes. Was a this difference. for a horse or like an animal first or? No. 18, I'm talking about treadmills used by humans. Oh, by humans. humans. Yeah. 1818? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's some evidence of okay, similar re way. rehab. I feel like it's one of those, what do you call those contraptions? It's like one of those crappy inventions you see in the 80s where it's like attached to like a rope and then it like turns this bucket, which then oh, like for electricity. Into, it's yeah. like, it was made for yeah, electricity. Yeah, it's like some first. weird like uh, invention. Yeah, I mean, you guys are kind of close. Oh, I was going to say, so generate some power. Some Rube. Huh? It was. It was used to reform convicts, and these oh. were huge wheels, like big hamster wheels. <laughs> oh my convicts God. would get on them. They'd power them with their own energy, wow. and then they would use the energy of the tread mill or tread wheel to either- Oh, look uh, at that. Yeah, see? No way. Yep. To either, uh, you know, uh, whoa, that's I, like one huge wooden. What a great, what a great wheel that everybody's standing on. And they would use it to pump water or to grind grain. Wow. So convicts would get on this. So and they would do, they would use it, and it they they would use the energy to do work, and they, it was it was to reform. So I, I asked this before, Sal, wow. on the podcast. I can't remember what you said or what we what like what was. Look the how conclusion? terrible that was, by the way. Why why don't we do stuff like this? Still? Yeah, I know. They consider it inhumane, but they'll put someone in solitary confinement for yeah. Almost like why? Way more why? Inhumane. Why have we gone away from the? We we already imprisoned tons of people. Why have we gone away from these ways of reforming and also doing something positive for society? I don't know. Like, yeah. Why? Like, I don't, nobody nobody has a, like a good answer for that. Yeah, I think because they consider it um, inhumane or I mean, which okay, you know how it was how, banned in 1900 is cruel and you and you know inhumane. how ridiculous that is because I'm pretty sure. Okay, I haven't done any long stints in prison, but I'm pretty sure <laughs> Wait, you do a if, <laughs> if I was in prison for, say, 10 years, I'd rather be working and I had around. an option yeah. to walk on a treadmill Steering or my whack weeds or, yeah. or stay in your room or all day stay in myself. my room all day. I'll choose yeah, labor. 100%. Just clenching my cheeks. I cheek would want to do corner. that. 100%, so the idea yeah. that- You know what? That's a good point. If you gave them a choice, it yes. wouldn't be as inhumane. Yeah. The that, choice is what we've always done versus this, which is now you can go work. And it's hard, I but you can work. Guarantee yeah. eighty plus percent would choose of a work. Of course, would choose it. No, isolation is way awful. Worse. Awful. Way worse. Yeah. So, so, but now back then it was terrible though because they would leave them on there for like eight or ten hours. Sure, they probably whipped. They, <laughs> they probably whipped them and, and did all kinds of other abuse to them uh, too. Like I'm just, sure it was really bad. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Yes. But I mean, there's got to be something. Just goes, in that just wheel. goes to show you, you know, people get on the train. Aren't, 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 aren't all of our license plates done in prison? Aren't all the license plates? I do believe like a prisoner on there. License plates? Yeah, license plates are made in prison. I think. Oh, I believe so. I think so. I don't. I don't know. I'm just saying random shit. That's weird. Maybe I saw it in a movie or something. Hey, did you guys see? This, Shawshank Redemption. So are you guys, okay, so you guys, we've all seen this now. We've all seen this start to happen. I'm, I'm taking a left here. Um, we've seen Elon Musk uh, go from, uh, you know, somebody that was just heralded as this pro, save the climate, great guy, to, uh-oh, we hate him. Yeah. Media's after him. Get ready for- Media and technology loved him. Get ready for- well, He came out openly and- Massive. There's donating to, to Massive Trump's. propaganda attacks. Or just the tax on the guy, he is debt. He is going to be donating forty five million dollars a month, a month to a pro Trump uh, super PAC. Wow, forty five dollars every month. Forty five million dollars will get donated to that campaign. Yeah, which makes him now enemy number one. He is now by far the largest donor. He's now they're comparing him with George Soros for the right, although he's richer than George Soros. Yeah, crazy. Is, is he just going to live out of a bunker at you, this point? Because like, how he does he travel? He, well, yeah. he doesn't have a home, right? So he doesn't have a. Yeah, does he, he doesn't have a, really have a. Yeah. Did you see that he said? I guess that that's he, smart. He said he's tried. Uh, someone's tried to kill him twice. Yeah, yeah. I did I, see that. I heard yeah. that. I did see that. Which, so th this, yeah, I don't, I don't doubt that. How do you guys feel about this? Do you think he made a uh, a smart decision, stupid decision, or do you think he's just the guy? I think who he's he just is. principled. I think he's yeah. just who he is. That's what know? I think. 
Yeah, I mean, I think if you uh, like, you really, he seems to just do what he th wants. That's exactly. Yeah, right. he seems to do what he wants yeah. and really doesn't care if you like it or not. Right. So, and I mean, so far the guys. Uh, I mean, he's I hit, mean, the he's hit gold for him time. seeing how much like free speech has been attacked. Like, yeah. I think it's it's noble in that regard. Whether yeah. you like his like political stance or not, would you say he's up there with uh, most polarizing personalities? Who's like you? Who top five? You put Trump in there. You know what's you funny? Put Elon in there. You, he is, but I you know what's funny? Like he's polarizing. Yeah, he's it's just, not. It's just yeah. Like, oh, you, what he's done is what people hate. If you hear what he says, and you, you don't see, think he's polarizing, he he's used in terms of his language. He's used to be polarizing, but his language is not. Like, yeah, there's people who it's have very. There's balanced. people have polarizing language and attitudes, but when yeah. you hear what he says, Elon, and you hear the stuff that he says, maybe I'm wrong, but I haven't seen him yeah. say anything that's like, bro, oh he God. trolls all the time. He's like a master troller. That in itself makes him polarizing. Yeah, that's a good point. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's that's really, a, yeah, I mean, that's, that's that, a good point. That he in does itself. have ch really yeah. cheeky <laughs> tweets. Yeah. I mean, wait, I guess we're, you, yeah. I don't really consider the, that. I you guys are on the pro yeah. side, so you know, you know what I'm saying? If yeah. you, I guarantee we had somebody in here that's an anti, you know, you know, I've ever heard them talk about him. Like, they just, people I was just him. thinking of his interviews, I guess. Like, yeah. But yeah, his tweets he, are like, like Trump, he's very much so a loved or hated person. Yeah. There's not a lot of in the middle. There's not a lot of people like, oh, yeah, he seems like a pretty cool guy. It's like, I, you're either like an Elon bro or you're like a uh, hate him. He's the worst human ever. Like, yeah. That's how people see him. Most people. That's how I feel. But I'm, it's funny and ir ironic because a lot of those people I've talked to and then they own a Tesla and I'm just like, <laughs> he's winning still. I love still. that. Yeah, yeah, I love you that. You just gave him money. Yeah. I mean, I it's like pretty him. pretty hilarious. I like him. I I openly, if you remember, I, I don't know if I ever said on the podcast. I know I said it off podcast to you. I liked Trump way before he was yeah, what he yeah. was today. Like I used to, but when he was first, talking about potentially running i was a, a fan of him as as like a person to run this country but that has a lot to do with i've always thought that the person that should run our country should be a really good businessman or woman i just think that that's when you yeah. think about the things that we need as a, as a country and a nation so much of those those skills are the same types of skills and needed to be a You're, billionaire. Listen, like, I, I'm going to agree with you, but I'm also going to disagree. You're right, and a lot of that is right. But there's one part that's missing, which is you also have to be a very effective political communicator because here's where Trump sucks. When shit hits the fan... He doesn't come out, and he's not a good like. Let's all come together, person. Okay, he's so, like, a, let's okay, get so more okay, angry. What you just, what you're saying is mm -hmm. to be. Uh, you got to be both. a good politician. Also, I'm yeah. saying to run the country. I'm not saying I'm not saying he's a good politician at all. Like yeah. that's where he fails. Like he doesn't give a fuck. He's like that makes him a bad politician. But to he's not bad at running the country, and that what you're saying right now has nothing to do with running the country. It does in a sense that if you get because the guy is the best, at, like you, the and, art of making the deal is his thing. Like yes, that's you're what right. he's great yeah, at. You're right, and he and he did and he's he did some pretty crazy uh, peace deals in the Middle East. He met up with North Korea's leader, all that yeah. stuff. But the part that that not you also have to in order to be effective, you have to also uh, be able to uh, communicate in a way that doesn't. Uh, drive people further apart. So like yeah. when the George Floyd thing happened, remember the first thing he came out and said, you, you loot, we shoot. I know. Wrong timing. It, yeah, it's like, this is not, you know, maybe you might believe that. And I'm not a fan of, of people who loot or, or riot and destroy other people's bu businesses. But at that moment, yeah. what we needed was someone come I mean, out he's, he's, and calm things yeah, down. Yeah, well, he's not is, that guy. He needs, he needs a, uh, I mean, I, I mean, for whatever, I don't know much about the VP he chose, but he does need somebody who balances that yeah. out, who like in those times, it's like, hey, this is where we sit you out. <laughs> I know, <laughs> exactly. The, That's what I was hoping like a Vivek or you right, know, you RFK like a, Jr. Yeah. would be like his other pick. I mean, Vivek is a great a, Vivek's a great example. Yeah. Vivek is the opposite of him. Vivek in the does sense a of, great job. He, almost uh, too, too good. good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so to what makes you well, like people don't believe, very Obama-esque. Yeah. Right, very just a Obama's. silver, very silver tongue yep. in every situation, and it's like, you know, again, like, I yeah, mean, no track record. There's a lot. There's, the right there's things that are important to that, but again, I when the things that I care about, this is me. I'm not talking about what the, what yeah. you need to be a good politician. What I care about is somebody who can run a business, and I know that might what might come with that. Someone who might be a little brass might rub. Might, yeah, other he's people a might not like. For but sure. when I think of like how I want my country ran. I want us protected from other countries. Yeah. I want to. I want a dude that stands up for us. That can can talk to people that are evil, that are good, that are Did negotiate that? deals. That somebody who can look 
at America as like a company and saying that we need to be profitable and successful and like that that's how I want did you, did you them to see, run. I don't know if this is true, but there was a story that I don't know who was telling it. This was somebody in the military uh, establishment was with him at a meeting when he was meeting with the leader of I forgot what insurgent group or something. Trump sat down in front of the guy and he said, "We're going to." I don't remember what he said. He said something like, we're going to pull out or, or over this next two-week period, but if a single yep. soldier is harmed, I'm going to take you and everybody else out. And then yeah. he laid down a photo of the guy's house from a satellite. What? And then he mm -hmm. walked out. Yeah, you didn't hear that story? Yeah. No. I, I don't know if this is true, but, but one that of the guys- I was in a that podcast was with, yeah. yeah, it was- um, I was like, oh, that's gangster. Another <laughs> senator <laughs> gangster. or somebody was in the room and they heard yeah. that, yeah. I don't know if that's real or if that's just political. I mean, and, and just- so What a weird time. I don't know if anything's real. I hate this. I know. It's so stupid. That's something I think in the next 50 years we'll look back and say things about too. It's like, remember when we used to believe stuff on the internet? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> remember when we used to believe well, the Well, dude, news? when you start going back in time and you start looking at a lot of like- information that we received and you're just like yeah. wow you know what i wish he's that is you know all what I, bullshit i would like to have heard him say which i don't know if i would love to have heard him say the same people that killed jfk the same people that killed martin luther king the same people that killed martin luther k uh, martin, uh, uh malcolm x um tried to kill me and they missed i don't know if that's true or not but i i could see that really oh yeah uniting that catch people. fire absolutely oh, yeah because uh, I, I mean, that's, I don't care which side you're on. That was a weird. Uh, that whole situation was mm, yeah, very interesting. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a left because I know Doug's over there shaking, <laughs> squirming his, in his chair, squirming his chair, getting uncomfortable. So squirming. I I, 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 I brought up news. a a a Gottman stat the la one of the last times I, yeah. I brought up a, a cool stat. I don't remember what it was about. Oh, it was the the long kiss thing, right? I don't know if any of you guys have even done that. And the long the hug, long hug, the long, uh, hug. The long twenty second hug. hug. Yeah, you guys yeah. tried to do that to me the other day, and I squibbed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Real <laughs> fast. <laughs> Not here. Him. I could hear his gut. <laughs> <laughs> I felt it coming. Uh, another one that I saw them, they, they have such good stuff, man. Um, I've definitely been going down the rabbit hole of their stuff again. And uh, they they had they did this study on uh, men that kiss their wife goodbye every morning to work live four years longer. Oh, wow. I saw oh. that. And Courtney pointed that out to me. She's like, you see this? Oh, she did? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I was like, oh, that I was thought a it was... nice little reminder. Yeah, really? yeah I thought it was well, good. I wonder how and why. Maybe just because it signifies better relationship? It, yeah, I'm sure. It's got to. Yeah, you're just yeah. acknowledging. I'm sure there's, it's multiple. So I'm sure the it day. signifies you have a better relationship. You have a purpose. Yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? You have somebody else that you care above yourself, maybe. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I bet it connects to a lot of things. That would make for a longer, mm -hmm. better life, you know. So I was raised uh, you where say, it was you say hi and bye whenever you enter and leave a room, or like like that's your you culture to. too. That's very culture. Italian, Filipino. Yes. They're like that. Like that's I'm very much the Irish goodbye. Yeah, me too. Just, just slip <laughs> out. <laughs> I'm so. I tell you, that's been one of the Smoke. hardest things for me to train. Is because Katrina's family is very much so. Yeah, it, same thing. Like you like say that. hi to everybody. Everybody, hi. yeah. Every, hi, bye, and hug, kiss every yeah, single yeah. person in the room. And it's just, it's like, it's so opposite. I'm so Irish goodbye guy. And yeah. so that's like polar opposites. So I'm always, I always get caught in this like awkward moment you know, of like, uh, you know naturally I, I want to go, but then I'm like, I got to go do this thing. You, you know, know what I do yeah. to my teenagers, my teenage kids that mm. they hate, they hate it. They hate it when I do this. If I say goodbye to them, give them a hug and they're kind of like, oh, uh, you know, whatever, bad mood or whatever. Like, well, you never know. I mean, this could be the last time. Oh, God. <laughs> you pulled that Oh, yeah. yeah. Shut up. <laughs> I don't know. You never Don't know. say that. You know how yeah. dangerous is to drive alone? <laughs> I'll see you. I'll hopefully see you later. Oh, oh, oh come on. No, That's I so hate bad. that. That's yeah. so bad. It would suck if it actually happened. Yeah. How, how yeah. guilty they'd feel. Oh, oh my, my God. God yeah. me. <laughs> Did you guys see the other <laughs> article that, that Jackie sent over this morning? Jackie sent over a good article. What's it like uh, in the lines of this, like, uh, you know, living longer, married, marriage, stuff like that. Did you see it with beards? No. Yeah, pull up, Douglas. I oh, thought, I saw. It. Did with, you? Oh, people, men with beards. They're more stable. Yeah, yeah. Or more, something? They're, yeah, they're yeah. more likely to be interested in long term relationships. Yeah, more and committed. And more committed. They're more committed. Yeah. I mean, it does bring like a wizardly uh, wisdom. Well, you know, women when they they like uh, they view men with larger beards as being better fathers as well. Hmm. So there's some 
So there's some some intelligence back and forth. Now, what do you think? So I think it's because you, you, it's like, you I think anymore. when you're getting clean you shaven, more like a professor. there's something about like getting sh like clean shaven is like you, I'm doing this to go present myself yeah. in the best, way, sharpest, cleanest way where a beard's kind of like, I don't give a fuck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got say? kids to take care of. Yeah, yeah. I got shit I go to, to do. Too. Yeah. yeah. I got logs to carry. I got yeah. built. I got bridges to build. You know what I'm saying? I got shit to do. <laughs> so, yeah. Maybe it's that or yeah, like you can actually go build something and you know, it like signifies that you're like a rugged dude, yeah. you know, well, on some well, level. Well, beards. Uh, I told Not you guys about. I told you guys guy. about. There was this. There was this. Uh, this group that did studies on beards to it find was out the sword thing, right? Wasn't that the? Well, they're trying to figure out why. Why do? What's the evolutionary purpose of a beard? Uh, and part of the argument was it displays health. So if you have a big healthy beard, you probably don't have, you know, mites and lice, and you probably have good health. The other one, which they tested, was that a big beard will 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 help blunt any blows to the face and since men historically are more likely to get into you know scuffles and stuff so they tested this they took they took these uh i don't know what you call them dummies yeah that were like like and they took a skull yeah and they covered it in different length beers and then they dropped bowling balls on it to see the difference yeah and it did significantly reduce i remember the breaking impacts. the jaw having a beer yeah i remember when you brought that up and what i thought was so interesting about mm. that point you made was why is not every ufc guy rocking a massive i know beard? some of them are you know like yeah, they're, back like, in the day like big yeah, country remember that guy? Yeah. Dude. yeah you would think that everybody would if that was if that's true and like why would you not like i know there was immediately dude uh, saturday was a ufc fight uh um it was a it was it was a free card it wasn't a, a championship fight but one of the one of the girls that was fighting she was fighting with fake eyelashes and like in the first round got punched in the face and it goes flying off <laughs> <laughs> and so she's got one Why? fake eyelash on and one that looks so ridiculous <laughs> and when what kind of coach Why lets their fighter that? go out with fake eyelashes on of all the things like because those things like because that could easily get come half off and be stuck in her eye yeah, and exactly it's like jab her own eye i thought like, that was so weird yeah. that is oh, so rose. strange rose yeah yeah that, that was a fight yeah oh, rose no. knocked it off you know what this makes me what this reminds me i should have known that there it was probably made it all over the place I, right? I always i always this is okay this is a pet peeve this is a pet peeve for probably every fitness fanatic but okay. definitely every gym owner yeah that's ridiculous <laughs> now you just look stupid. Uh, look I, at the reason why, Doug. Sorry, keep going. What, what do they say? Like, well, yeah, what's the whole, what's the whole, because I was curious. I Probably never. Probably to look, she thought she looked pretty with it all? No. Yeah, I don't Rose know. Rose is I, a badass, dude. Like, she is. Yeah. She's awesome. She is. Um, put on a clinic, too. Uh, I, this is a big pet peeve of mine. People that come into the gym, I used to hate this as a gym manager. I hate it now as somebody that works out in a gym. If you come to the gym and you have a shit ton of perfume or cologne on, get the hell out of here. Get yeah. out. What are you doing here? You're making everybody dizzy. Yeah, but what if? I mean, and trust me, I hate it more than anybody. And I yeah, agree. BO's bad too. But, but no, I, no, no. But what if? What if someone's coming straight from their job all day? Oh, like you have a. You have how a, much do you put on? Where it lasts I mean, no, that listen, much all day? listen. Nobody hates cologne worse than I. I'm like, Dude, I. You absolutely. ever work out next to somebody? With no, that? I, I know, I oh. know. I'm not a. Fa I'm not a fan of cologne. Period. I don't yeah. give a shit where you are. I don't like. I do not like cologne. I don't like perfume. Yeah. I don't like any of that crap. And. uh Katrina's brothers all wear it. Like I yeah. literally, yeah, when do. we go over when to her house, name comes over to yes, yeah, yeah. I have to shower. I shower every time because guess what? We have to hug when we see each and other. We have to hug when we leave. So then I smell like it, and it drives me crazy. So I literally every time I visit her family, <laughs> I shower as soon as Bro. I get home, no matter. How, how do I talk my son out of it? I hate he's it. He's into it oh, right he's now. I hate it, bro. He's but like, my point oh, is he thinks, I think he thinks that like girls are going to like turn their head like, ooh. Do you know what happened? i tell you what happened. Some girls yeah, said some girls said something. It. Yes. Because some girls like it. One girl said they like it. That's it. Now he's going to wear that yes. shit forever. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, okay, if you're going to do it, you just like spray it in the air and then just, you know. You can't do a direct contact. No. That's like you're screwed. No. Like, now I'm like, oh, I'm going to get a headache in the no. car. No, I can't. Oh, man. I'm the Axe be... body spray ruined it for all of us, dude. <laughs> oh, fuck. Dude, Axe was the worst. The worst. Did you yeah. wear So you never wore cologne as a kid? Never. Even as a kid, you were sensitive. Never. Yeah. yeah hated it. Always did, hated did it. Did you wear any cologne as a kid? No. I, the most I ever did was, uh, it was like aftershave. And so I, <laughs> it was, I'm sure it was a Home Alone inspired, you know, I was like <laughs> shave and then I was like, I wanted to feel the uh, the, the alcohol. Yeah, I actually burn. liked the burn when I was a yeah, kid. Yeah, I liked it. When I first started shaving, I thought it was cool. And it was yeah, really, it was funny. like my dad's brute. 
You know, like, brute. So yeah, I used to get yeah. brute for Christmas every year. This drove me crazy. Nobody Why? wears that shit anymore. Yeah, yeah. People, you know, relatives buy shit. Yeah. And this is like the same thing in know? the green bottle. Yeah. Oh yeah. yes. No, I wore uh, what every kid Very wore. Musky. I wore what every kid wore in the nineties. Drakkar. Okay. <laughs> you guys remember Drakkar? <laughs> <laughs> my or friend had cool water. And cool water's it, the other one. It ended up in in my uh, cabinet. I think I still even have it today. Really? Do they? Yeah. Even make I it never still? even. Probably not. Cool water. Do they? I don't know. I'm not sure, but it's oh. like full, and I've never even used it. Oh, yeah. gross! Yeah, I, yeah, I don't. I've never, I've never been. I like the smell of clean. It was like a clean smell. Yeah, like a laundry. <laughs> like, yeah, like exactly. Fresh like you laundry. laundry shirt, you just got out of the shower. Yeah. Like, do you guys fresh. use softener on your clothes? No. Uh, yeah. I, we we do on our um on our sheets. I think is I where Katrina uses. Yeah, the you want to take that off? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, those are xenoestrogen, big time. Mm, yeah. We. Big time. I don't know can't, if I can can't hide from all the chemicals. No. It. Yeah. Yeah. That waxy. Oh, that feels chemicals. so nice. Yeah, that's, yeah. I love that. That's a bunch of bunch of. Remember, remember, I'm the guy who wants to like bunch of you know plastic people. Hold you know, me. I made it because I'm gonna have somebody who m makes my bed every single day. Every fre single fresh day? sheets every single day. When it's, I lived with, so I lived with my when, grandmother for a short period of time because my parents went to Italy all summer. So I lived there. Remember, this is the story I told you guys of my grandma. This, this, is all, this is when I got into lifting weights, and she's like, "What do you want to eat?" And I'm like, "I like steak." So she'd make me steak three times a day. Anyway. She used to hang her clothes outside. She would dry all of her clothes outside. Yeah. You know how nice uh, sheets are when they're hung outside, dried outside in the sun? Oh, I'm you get sure. A, oh, yeah. Just nice, crisp linen or whatever. I wonder what that feels like, actually. I don't think I've ever experienced that. Oh, yeah. Kind of want to now. Yeah. You think it's better? <laughs> I mean, Could be. There's clean air. Yeah, unless you live next to like a <laughs> pollution factory, <laughs> yeah, yeah. or like a like a farm where well, you get all this all these like the aller, uh, yeah. you get all this pollen and shit. That'd be a <laughs> nightmare an airport, for me. That'd like be a nightmare for me. Yeah, so I'm like so dust. sensitive to all that, like pollen getting all over your bed sheets. Yeah. Uh, no, she used to hang everything out there and then put it on. You know, and I, like almost every other day, wash my sheets. It's like, oh, this is so nice. Yeah, I, yeah, I'll have to try that. So nice. Yeah. Do we have a shout out for today? Yeah. So my recommendation is a book called New Confessions of an Economic Hitman. Ooh. Oh, I heard about this Have you book. ever listened or read that book? No. 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 Is it older? Uh, well, they he wrote it a while back. He's done a new version of it. But this guy essentially went into different countries and unseated governments. I mean, there's assassinations, all those things done by yours truly, the U.S. government. Hey. And he, he reveals it all. Wow. Interesting. Yeah. That sounds fascinating. Really cool. Say that again. What's the name of it again? It's called The New Confessions of an Economic Hitman. Paleo Valley, this company we've been working with for a long time, they have literally the best tasting protein powder I've ever had in my entire life. It's bone broth. It is a collagen-based protein. It tastes like chocolate donuts. It's also one of the easiest to digest. Go check them out. They have many paleo-inspired supplements. Go to paleovalley.com forward slash mind pump and you'll get an automatic discount applied, 15% off your first order. All right, back to the show. Our first question is from Rob Serrano4. What is the best or right time to take creatine? Oh, creatine. Good question around creatine. The time you'll do it consistently. Thank you. Yeah, so if you were to look at the list of uh, importance or priorities around timing with creatine, the most by far important thing to consider is what time is the time that you would most likely be consistent with your creatine usage. When you when, Now, creatine's been around for a long time now, since the 90s. Uh, it's one of the most studied, if not the most studied, um, ergogenic supplement out there. Tons of benefits. We know it builds muscle and strength indirectly, probably aids in fat loss through the metabolism boosting of the muscle building. It's got pro-health benefits for your organs. It's good for your brain, cognitive function. It's a longevity supplement. Methylation um, benefits. It's just across the board, it's, everybody should probably take creatine unless they're some weird contraindication. But when you look at now that it's been around for decades, in my experience with creatine, the biggest challenge I had with clients was consistency. Yeah. How do I get them to take this on a, on a regular or consistent basis? Um, people just aren't good at this. Even with prescription drugs, we talked about some of the uh, studies on that where, where one of the biggest issues with people who have to take medications, they just don't take them when they're supposed to or take them consistently. Or they don't finish them out, yeah. So you just pick the best time, whatever's going to be the most consistent. If it's next to your bed stand, so you take it right when you wake up or where you brush your teeth, you don't brush your teeth, you take it, or attaching it to your workouts because you don't miss your workouts. That's most important. Now, second would be, now this is splitting hairs, but there's some evidence to suggest that you- Post-workout. You, yeah, you absorb a little bit more 
or utilize a little bit more splitting or, or it gets though. used more post workout splitting totally hairs. splitting hair yeah it's yeah, not 100%. i mean i mean i personally uh am the, the hardest part is the consistency yep and the the most consistent I ever was was carrying it in my gym bag and then just becoming a thing that I did either pre or post workout because it was with me like that. Otherwise, um, oh shit, I forgot yesterday or whatever. So I think convenience and and consistency. The challenge is, the most is, is also is that creatine an efficacious dose is anywhere between for women probably three grams for men probably around five grams right more muscle mass more creatine. Some studies will say as much as ten might even have some benefit, uh, but I'll, I'll typically recommend three to five grams. If you take it in capsule form, that's like five capsules. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you have to take a pow a scoop of powder. So in my personal opinion, uh, what, what you're going to start seeing a lot more of, and I think you're starting to see this, are ways of, of, uh, of utilizing creatine that allow people to be more consistent because people don't like to take a handful of pills. Mm -hmm. And people definitely don't like to take a scoop of flavorless <laughs> powder yeah. Yeah. in their face or mixed with their water. But otherwise, it's like just pick the time you're going to use it uh, most consistently. And this is this is a supplement, you know, that I think you shouldn't miss. It's one that'll benefit almost everybody, and it's one you'll feel. You'll definitely feel if you take it. Next question is from Coach Lamar TMT. When following your programs, is it okay to replace some upper body movements with lower? I notice there are too many upper body exercises. And as a female, I have a well developed upper body and only want to maintain it. This is such a myth. I about know. the programs, I know. It's, yeah. <laughs> too many. There's yeah. There's more. There's more muscles in your upper body that we're targeting, so it feels like there's there's more upper body focus than there is yeah. lower body focus. No. It's not whatsoever. No, in fact, if you look at any of our full body based maps programs, they all start with lower body, which you're yeah. because of the intensity uh, of the lower body exercise. Is this like, is she considering a deadlift like a back exercise? You know, I've heard that. Before. It's not even that. You have, you just think uh, shoulders, upper back, lower back, chest, bicep, tricep. Yeah, you know, versus so, quads, hams, glutes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So that's what people think legs, they think quads, hams, glutes. And mm -hmm. then you think upper body, everything yeah. that I just went across. Like, so people are like, there's just so much upper body. It's like, you know, it's yeah, like, no. and it, the, the programming is designed to be the appropriate amount of volume. If you take out something in the upper body and then you add more to the lower body, then you were, we're out of that range. And yeah. most people, that, and this is why we always recommend that somebody follows it to a T one time and then and then so you can see yeah. the results from that. And then if you want to pull and change, go for it. But at least you now have a baseline of why we programmed it that way. And then you can go you know, test your theory. We're trying to get the loudest right. muscle building signal possible, a systemic muscle building signal. And and you know, that's why it's sequenced that way. We're not just and I and I get this too, because what probably a lot of women are used to is a lot of these like programs where it's all legs yes, and then yeah. it's like two like bicep and tricep exercises yep. and that's it and, and that's what I, i've seen that you know pretty and it's very ineffective and to, to the point where it's just like you know you're doing all this volume but it's like really insignificant exercises that don't really move the needle. it's also the lower body exor exercises tend to be more taxing on the way more on the entire body that too so comparing, three sets of barbell squats. So comparing, the, yeah, comparing uh, three sets of barbell squats to use where you were going uh, to four sets of lateral raises and four sets of you know chest flies and four sets of, like of rows, like those four sets of squats are more taxing on the body than all of those combined. Right, right. So it's like you have to understand that too. So I, I say I will say this: when you first start working out, you want to as a trainer. I'm speaking as a trainer when I individualize a workout. I will gear volume around correctional exercise first. In other words, what I'm trying to do as a trainer is I'm trying to get you to move better so that the exercise is more effective. Changing the volume for aesthetic purposes where I'm looking at your body or you're looking at your body and you're like, I want to develop more here. I want less here. I want this to be rounder. That happens later. That's when you're experienced. That's when you've been working out for a while. When you get beginners or, or you are a beginner or you've been working out for less than a year and you're like, I want to develop, I want to take volume away from here and put it over there. Probably not a good idea. You would need to develop balance before you work on, on aesthetics. But if you're experienced four years, five years consistent, then you can start doing something like what this person is suggesting, which is taking volume away from some areas and adding it uh, to other areas. But in the very beginning, if you do that, what you're probably going to do is create problems. You're probably yeah, going to create, create imbalances and dysfunction. 
And then you're not going to not, not only you're not going to get the body you think you're going to get, but you actually get, you'll actually go worse. You'll go backwards. So if you follow one of our programs, follow it the way it's laid out. If you're very experienced, been working out consistently for a while, then you can start to play around with them a little bit. Well, this, is what, makes me, it, this is what makes me nervous. Is it's coming from a coach. So they obviously consider themselves experienced, which is why yeah. they're asking that. They, I mean, if you're, if they're, they're a personal trainer. I just looked at their Instagram, uh, uh, biochem student, and a personal trainer. And so I'm assuming that they consider themselves an experienced lifter and is wanting to know where they would replace. Well, uh, here's what I would do if if this were appropriate. What I would do is I wouldn't eliminate exercises. That would be the last thing I would do. But what I would do is take sets away and add them to other exercises. Uh, but I wouldn't go too far because there is a upper limit of volume that an area can handle. But so let's, example might be this per, let's just say this person is got great chest development and care. I'm going to drop a set in my bench press day and I'm going to add one more thrust, set of, sort of hip like, thrust or squats. Right. That's right. So something, like, something that. like that. And that, that is good advice. Cause that if, we're already trying to tell this person to follow it as a T, probably not do anything. But if you're going to modify it, I would ease my way into modifying it like that versus eliminating uh, an exercise completely out That's of the right. upper body and then now adding a whole another, you know, three to five sets of another exercise to lower body. I just, uh, I mean, for sure, follow the program first to a, a T. Trust that maybe we kind of know what we're talking about a little bit. Next question is from Lift to Live. If I have a specific goal of reaching the thousand pound club, deadlift, bench, and squat, is there any point you would suggest using tools such as a belt or straps? Um, all right, let's be very clear here. Wearing a belt and especially wearing wrist straps, you'll lift more weight. Yeah. So if all you care about is the number on the bar, <laughs> it's going to help. Then yeah. you're going to lift more weight, right? So a belt uh, creates good artificial core stability. So the typical lifter who's experienced, could probably add 20 to 50 pounds to, let's say, a squat or a deadlift, maybe more to some people, um, just because they're wearing a really, really good belt. Wrist straps can sometimes do more than that, especially if your grip um, isn't so strong. But what does that mean, right? What does that mean exactly? I can lift more with this tool. Without the tool, I can't lift more. Um, I When I train clients, I stayed away from using belts and definitely wrist straps because I wanted their strength to be the kind of strength that they – would feel and exhibit real in the real world, world strength. Yeah, like you know, you're not going to wear a belt. No, in the in the real world when you're moving a couch or whatever. I mean, not it, to mention it changes recruitment patterns. Like a belt teaches your core to push out, whereas core stability without a belt tends to draw in a little bit. So very different. Um, and once you go down that it's, path, it's hard to reverse out. It's of. treating it like a sport. So now you're looking at this as like you know means to an end. Like I'm going to do. Um, you know, what's best for me to move weight, not what's best for my body. And so like, you're going to make compromise with that. So if you're in a competition setting where they allow you to have straps and a belt, it's advantageous for you to learn how to Makes effectively sense. do that yeah. and, and, you know, press your body to the degree that you can to squeeze the maximal potential out of like your lifting. But uh, if you're going to ask whether this is a good idea, it's not a good idea because you're going to create dysfunction in real world situations that you're going to have to deal with forever. So I'm going to I'm going to take the other side of this and say use them because the way the way the person is presenting this question, they want to okay. hit the number. That's right. I have a specific goal of reaching 1,000 pounds, and if you have the ability to use straps or belt, that 100 percent is going to assist you getting there faster. Period. End of story. Now, if you asked me a question like. Do I think it's a good idea or do I think it's what's best for you? Mm -hmm. Or could this affect recruitment patterns? Like, okay, then we go down the rabbit hole of all the reasons why it's probably in your best Dude, interest. wear a bench shirt, you know, yeah. like wear everything. I mean, well, that's a, exactly like, it's like it's, if it's I had a, a goal where I want my name on the board, you know, and the only way my name's getting on that board yeah. is when I cross over that thousand pound and I am allowed to use any and all tools then then that's the de desired outcome. It's to reach that goal, but yeah. just be aware. But we already talk about all this stuff already. So I feel like this person probably knows mm -hmm. that if you we were to be asked, do we think using straps and belts is a great idea? We probably, we, they've already heard us probably talk about that a million times, but if I have a very specific goal, yeah. I want to reach thousand pounds. Wrap your knees, you like, know? Like, yes. Like do all the things oh, all dude. at once. Oh, knee wraps, you'll yeah. add more weight. This reminds me in the 90s, there was, I can't remember his name. I was just trying to look him up. Can't remember his name. He used to be in the bodybuilding magazines because he would do these crazy feats of strength where he would bench press like a thousand pounds or curl like whatever. But he had a spotter that was holding the bar and helping <laughs> it. So it was like, 
you and your spotter are doing the lifts. Right. And I mean, it's still impressive. I couldn't do there a thousand pounds. There was a 24-hour fitness guy that used to do that all the time. You remember really? him? Yeah, he used to put like seven plates on oh. each side. Yeah, bench, bench place. You know, he used to have three people. He used to have two spotters on the side yeah. and the person two over the- pulling. And, he, <laughs> and then the one guy- You have, like, you have to remember you first above started the podcast. Head. I took a video of him. I do. Yes. Oh I, mean, I know exactly God. what you're talking about. Yes. It was this, this, this little white guy that used to do it. And he was probably a hundred and- 75 pounds at best, and he would seven plates on each side of bench. But press. he'd have his buddies help him. Oh, yeah. He'd, he'd, yeah. No, he would pick random members, whoever was willing. And I remember we, we used to have to, I checked him at the gym one time saying, like, hey, you can't do this. And he was, what do you mean? I'm like, you can't call on some random person who's working out. And he would tell him to lift it? Yeah, no come help him. And I'm like, that's how you hurt. Not If you don't hurt yourself, you're going to hurt one of these Ooh. members. So I was like, you can't lift it, bro, by yourself. You don't be doing that right now. What are you talking? You can't tell me I can't do it. Okay, whatever, guy. You're, yeah, some guys do that. Girls, I don't never seen a woman do that. Yeah, no, chicks don't do that. that. <laughs> That's not a chick thing to do that for sure. Next question is from More Life Jojo. Can you share your who your ideal GLP one client is for the coaching you are offering? Lately, you have had conversations with listeners who you think are and are not ideal users for GLP ones. Good question. Mm, I like this question. Okay, so uh, I do think that there's a broad. Uh, spectrum of people who would who would be appropriate um users of glp ones but we're not going to we're not going to target or we wouldn't want to work with the broad spectrum because talking to people like dr tina she uses glp ones sometimes for people with autoimmune issues and inflammatory issues that's not what we're looking for what we're going to look for is what most people are going to be using glp ones for or what they're advertised for or what you see the media uh, talk about them for which is to lose weight I would want to work with someone who's struggling, who struggled with weight loss for a long time and who has a significant amount of weight to lose. Not 10 pounds, not yeah. 15 pounds. Not little aesthetic. Uh, no, uh, not someone who's like, I want to get in shape for summer. No. But someone who's like, yeah, I got 60 pounds to lose. Yeah. I've struggled with this on and off my entire life. I have a tough time with food. I've had a really tough relationship with it. I've, you know, I've, I've worked with coaches. I've tried doing this, tried doing that. And I just, it's really hard for me to get a grasp of then I could see, that's when I could see this being something that would be a value. Do you have a minimum? Along with coach. Do you have a minimum? Like, would you say uh, more than 30 pounds? Pro yeah. 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 I think it's a good I number. I would say yeah. that. I, yeah. say, I think it's a, I think that's You a know good why I'm afraid of giving a number though? I, I know. I know it's, it's generic. And there no, could be no. Somebody who's more like, than that. Uh -oh. I, I remember this with the gastric bypass people I worked with. <laughs> oh, then people try to put weight on they, just to get they, that number. Yes. No, I remember too. That was Do you like remember a, that? I got yeah. hired. I'll never forget this. I'll never forget some lady coming in. Probably like I want to say 60, 70 pounds overweight. She had to gain weight to do and it. And she right? yeah. she hired me because she wanted me to help her put on more fat so she could qualify reach for, the yeah. whatever the uh benchmark was to qualify for it getting covered by her insurance to do the um That's more common cash. than you think. I did yeah, I remember the first time that happened. I thought this is insane. I'm, and I was just, no, I won't do that. Yeah. That's what I'm afraid of. If I give a number, I'm afraid somebody listening is like, Oh, I'm twenty pounds overweight. I know. Cool, I'll just let loose. Well, no, we're not gonna by the way, we're not gonna do that. We're that not gonna go case. through the list and be like, Oh, this person's twenty eight pounds, so they can't, yeah. this person's thirty. I'm just saying, generally speaking, you would prefer to see somebody yeah. I would, who is at least thirty pounds or more overweight. I think it's also easy to tell you who I wouldn't want using a GLP-1. If there you, you have a history of disordered eating yeah. uh, in the realm of anorexia, bulimia, mm. no. Like you weren't, GLP, yeah, using a GLP-1 is going to help you avoid food or starve yourself. That's not uh, the person I want to work with. Uh, I definitely don't want this with somebody who's a repeat uh, bikini competitor yes. or bodybuilder. Just trying to get ready for the summer. Definitely not someone person. looking to abuse a substance just to get to their goal faster. I agree. And I do think there is a, a use case. I mean, uh, so I started it back up two weeks ago again. I didn't announce it on the podcast, but I started it too, but with a much lower dose just because I actually noticed uh, when I came off, I noticed my psoriasis yeah, started to creep back so up. Weird. So now I'm kind of curious of like, just for those reasons. So I mm. want, I don't want it to be really crushing my appetite. So I took a much milder dose, like, like half of what I was. Uh, and I, and I'm only on week two, so I'll report back as far as what I noticed with my psoriasis. If there's studies currently going on right now with GLP ones for autoimmune. What that's what interests me about mm -hmm. this. So now, uh, so my point of bringing that up was that I do see that there is app and obviously I don't need to lose 30 pounds or more. So I do see there's applications for certain people, but I think what the people we're targeting that yeah. we want to help yeah. for this group of 50 people that are say that we're going to take through, 
I think we're looking for people that have been struggling with with and, uh, and, weight loss for a very long time. And that also, to use signif also significant also full amount. disclosure, this is going to give us a lot of insight in terms of the challenges right, that people right. are going to go through because uh, we don't have experience working with people who've used GLP. And we have lots of experience working with people who want to lose weight mm -hmm. and improve their health and fitness, tons, decades. But we don't have a lot of experience working with people with with GLP ones. So part of the value of this is also for us. I I don't know what challenges are going to that these people might potentially encounter that we are different than the ones that we've encountered in the past with people. Maybe there are no different you know challenges, but maybe there are new ones. And I want to be able to speak to them on the podcast, and it's going to allow us that opportunity. Which, by the way, it's it's I think you could still if you're interested, right? It's Coach GLP One. Dot com. You can yeah. still do it. Coach GLP one uh, dot com. Look, if you love the podcast, we have a lot of free guides at mindpumpfree.com. We have one that teaches you how to squat like a pro. It's free. It's again, mindpumpfree.com. You can also find us on Instagram. Justin is at mindpumpjustin. I'm at mindpumpdestefano and Adam is at mindpumpadam. Adam.